Hey guys, so um, today I have a live uh, gameplay between myself and one of my friends. He is on the left playing Chaos Turbo, and I am on the right playing Reason Gate. Um, this match went to three games, and uh, the third game is pretty, pretty interesting to watch, so I'm, I'm excited to show you guys this. And he's also playing uh, an interesting or unique build of Chaos Turbo, so. Uh, I won the dice roll, so I went first. I used Pot of Greed. He took a little peek at his top card, his sixth card, but it doesn't really matter because uh, I'm not playing Delinquent, so having that information doesn't really make a difference. But I ripped the reasoning right off the bat, turn one. Usually, um, I don't like to do this, but since I'm playing Sinister in this build, um, it makes uh, first turn reasoning a little bit better. But I hit the Jinzo. Um, which is a pretty nice start against a Chaos Turbo, especially because they're, they often run um, Heavy Trap lineup. But uh, but um, they always seem to have the out or the Snatch Seal for the, for the Jinzo, uh, which he does. Um, so he Snatch Seals it. Not great, but it's not the worst, and I'm kind of prepared for this. I usually just assume that they're going to have a Snatch Seal and, and uh, play accordingly. Um, so I'm sitting on a Scapegoat. Uh, perfect time to use it right now. Block two attacks. And I think I also have a giant true nade in my hand, so that's why I wasn't particularly worried about um, the snatch steal. But um, yeah, let's see what I do here. I think I top deck the Graceful Charity. Um, Uh, he's just fixing the life points. Oh yeah, don't look at the life points on the phone. Uh, we messed them up a couple times. Look at the life points on the bottom of the screen. Uh, he was just fixing life points there from, from the last game. But uh, yeah, so I used the Graceful. Um, I had the Sinister Serpent. Feels so good to uh, discard Serpent off of Charity. But um, yep, yeah. uh, use Charity. Dig three cards deeper, thinking what to do, discard here. Um, I think I end up discarding uh, Fusilier. I don't have a light in the grave yet, that's important to keep in mind. So I have a dark in the grave uh, in the form of Fusilier, but I don't have the light yet. Um, so I don't have the cast play, uh, and I'm thinking about how to get there. So I have another reasoning, uh, hopefully I can get a light target off of that. He's checking out my grave to uh, Think about what level he should call, which is you know really important to do. And um, whenever you're playing against Reason Gate, always keep track of what monsters are in their graveyard so you know what to call. Uh, he called eight probably because I had the Pot of Greed and Graceful already in the grave, um, so he's afraid of Demox. So he calls eight. I get the Crane. It's fine. Um, thinking what I should do here. I think I have a Monster Gate in my hand. Um, and I'm thinking about whether I should do that. Um, in my hand at this point in time, I think I also have a Monster Reincarnation and Giant Trunade and Metamorphosis, I think. Um, but I'm thinking here, and I'm pretty sure I end up just using a Monster Gate. Yeah, so I use another Monster Gate, uh, trying to hit the Democ. Uh, he lets it go through, great. Uh, I end up hitting another crane right here, <laughs> funny enough. So I have two cranes, still no way to get over the Jinzo or the Kaiku, but I do have the Trunate in hand and uh, Chaos Sorcerer in hand. I do not have a light in the graveyard right now, so I need a way to get that in the graveyard, but I haven't normal summoned, so that's good. I'm just doing a little mental math right here um, because I feel like I have the OTK play. I'm just figuring out how to do it. Uh, and the way I go about it is a little bit, um, not super complex, but not uh, not super straightforward either. But I I believe I try to use the true nade, and really his only way to stop my true nade right now would be with a solemn judgment. But yep, I end up using the true nade. Um, He does not have the judgment and he can't activate traps because Jinzo is still in the field. Great. I take the Jinzo. 
So right now I have the Chaos Sorcerer in my hand, I have the Meta in my hand, and I have um, the Monster Reincarnation. I need to get the Kaiku off the field so I can summon a Chaos Sorcerer, and I still need a Light in the Grave. I use Monster Reincarnation right here to get back Fusilier. I tribute the Thousand Eyes and the Crane, so now I have a Light and Dark in the Grave for the Fusilier. And then I can Special Summon the Chaos Sorcerer and push for game. I think that's like over 9,000 damage or something. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a pretty sick play. Um, really had to think about that and do some math right there. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I just love Metamorphosis. Um, comes in clutch, gets you out of a lot of different situations. Um, and yeah, had the perfect uh, perfect hand to, to uh, make that OTK happen. Okay, so moving into uh, game two. So game two against Chaos, uh, especially my, my friend here, is, is really difficult because uh, I think his build's a little bit unique. He's playing two Kaikus in the main deck, and after he sides, he has like three Kaikus and two Jaugans in the in the deck. So that's just really hard for me to deal with. Like if he sets a board, sets up a board with Kaiku and Jaugan, that's incredibly difficult for me, for me to out. Because even if I, even if I get rid of the Kaiku, sorry, even if I get rid of the Jaugan, he still has the Kaiku to stop the uh, Chaos plays. But he opens Jar of Greed, uh, sorry, Pot of Greed, and uh, Upstart. So he's already you know three cards deep into his deck, which is pretty sweet. I think Upstart is particularly good in Chaos Turbo because it makes uh, Magician of Faith live um, more often, and he's playing three Moths, so it's uh, good. But he ends up T-setting and passing, which is uh, not a fun field to play against necessarily, but it's definitely better than him summoning Kaiku and setting 2-3 to three back row, or summoning Jalgen and setting 2-3 to three back row, so I'm not upset about it. I used the Reasoning here. Uh, I believe he either calls 4 or 6. 4 is generally a good number to call uh, when your opponent uses uh, Reasoning when they don't have anything in the grave yet just because you're running multiple Sacred Cranes. But he might call 6 if he's afraid of the Jinzo. I forget what he calls. Um, I think he called 6. But I end up hitting 7 Fusilier, so that's pretty good. Let's see here. I think I have a Sacred Crane in hand, so I'm thinking about whether or not I should summon it. Uh, I'm not really afraid of Torrential because if I summon the Torrential, sorry, if I summon the Sacred Crane and he Torrentials, he loses his face down, which I'm assuming is Magician of Faith because it always is. <laughs> and then uh, I have a Light in the Dark in the Grave, so it's not the worst. So I just summon the Crane and try to get in there, and I get in there for 2800, which is nice. But he uses the Moth to get back um, the Pot of Greed. And he MSTs my Ring of Destruction back row, which kind of sucks because I was hoping to use that ring on a Kaiku or a Jaugen. So he's already activated Pot of Creed twice this game. Um, so that feels good. He's already plus whatever, like plus two right there, or plus three. Um, he summons the Breaker and decides to crash over the Crane, or run over the Crane rather. Um, so take a little damage there. And the nice thing is I didn't have a back row set, so the breaker still has uh, its counter on it, which is sweet because I have a snatch steel in my hand and I'm looking forward to taking the breaker. Um, it feels really good taking the breaker while it still has its counter on and then popping your opponent's back row with it. But uh, he sets three back row, which is uh, not fun to play through, but I have the snatch steel, so I'm going to force out at least one of those back row for sure. So I try to take this try to take the breaker. If I resolve that snatch deal and pop a back row, he'd be in a really tough position, but there's no way it's gonna resolve. He's either gonna judgment it or book it or right get the break or something. A lot of ways to stop this. But um this is probably the mo one of the more ideal ways for me for him to stop it. Um so he rings the breaker and we both take 19 1900. Uh and I make a slight misplay here, or not not necessarily misplay, but I'm just playing a little bit conservatively. I do have a Chaos Sword in my hand, which is live, because I think I have a Chaos Sword and a uh, Crane in the graveyard. So I can summon it and try to get in there, but I'm just afraid of Torrential and Mirror Force at this point. Um, because 
if he tarnishes the Chaos Sorcerer, I don't really have a follow-up play here. Um, but I probably should have just played a little bit aggro because it's more likely that he has Raigeki Break or or um, Solemn Judgment face down. So I could have actually won if I uh, if I had gone a little bit more aggro. But uh, yeah, I ended up attacking with a Fusilier, so it puts him down to five. Um, he has a sick play right here. He just like drops a bomb on me. He summons BLS and then um, Jao get May Phase two, which is just a nasty field uh, because I can't special summon and he has his big boss monster out. So that sucks. He's down to five hundred because he took that Fusilier, but um, I know he's probably sitting on Judgment in the back and um, I can't special summon at all. So this is not looking good for me right here. I tried to Lightning Vortex, and um, yeah, he definitely has a Judgment sitting down. Yeah, he does. So that stops that, and I really can't out the Jowgan and the BLS. So um, yeah, it's a tough spot to be in. <laughs> I only have two cards in my hand now, too, and yeah. So I scoop it up. He has game. That was a sick Solemn Judgment in the end. He only paid 250 life points for that, so got he got some, some great value out of that uh, Judgment. And uh, moving on to game three. So, game three, I'm going first. Um, generally, playing against uh, people who side in the Jagan and the Kaikus, uh, I tend to just rip the reasonings and the monster gates as quickly as possible um, to fuel the grave uh, with lights and darks and spells, and just to, uh, you know, maybe get Sinister Serpent out, or just go through the deck before the opponent uh, starts to shut me down. So I ripped two reasonings and hit Sinister and Jinzo. He guessed it wrong both times. I'm guessing he he probably guessed four, you know, both times, maybe four and eight. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty solid start here. It's really nice to have the Sinister Serpent uh, online as quickly as possible, so you just keep getting back. Um, I'm thinking what to do here. I don't really want to leave the Jinzo on the board because I have a trap in my hand and if he Snatch steals it again then it'll shut off my trap and then I'll be in a really bad spot because he's going to attack over the Serpent I won't be able to protect it. So I'm thinking what to do here uh, and I think I make a pretty smart play given the cards I have here. I, I end up tributing the Jinzo for an Air Knight and I do this because I want Jinzo in the grave. I don't want him to be able to take it. I want a light on the field so that I'll have a light and dark in the grave for chaos. And then I also have a trap as a back row so it's online now and you'll see uh, what I mean. Okay, so he opens up uh, Pot of Greed and Upstart again. So Upstart's just so good <laughs> in Chaos Turbo but yeah, it feels good starting Pot of Greed again. He, I believe he activates Heavy Storm right here. To try to clear my back row. Um, I'm not really sure why he did that. He probably thought it was like a scapegoat or something, so he wants to get rid of it while I have two monsters on the field. But I make a pro play here. I uh, call the Haunted for the Jinzo. If you guys didn't know, Jinzo negates the, the Call of Haunted, so when the Call of Haunted leaves the field, then the Jinzo, Jinzo will not die. It'll stay on the field, kind of like how Premature Burial works with uh, Giant Trunade. Um, so he's thinking here, but he has the MST. So he got he has like he has the outs here. He uses the MST to chain to the Call the Haunted and destroying it before the Jinzo gets um, special summoned. So that was pretty lucky that he had that because I would be in a pretty commanding position if he didn't. But he summons the Breaker and crashes it into the Air Knight, which I'm not upset about. I use uh, Monster Gate. Uh, I get out a Crane. That's fine. Uh, draw a card off that. Let's see here. Um, he's got a pretty much open field. Back road's highly likely to be a Regeki break or a Solemn Judgment. So I summon the crane, try to get in there for 32. He has a torrential, it's fine. It does it's it's pretty good to get rid of the torrentials early on as a reasoning game player. But uh yeah, and I'm not upset because now I have lights in the grave. Alright, he uses T drag. And um, okay, he T sets again and passes. So I got the sinister back, which is pretty nice. Um, 
I don't think I have too much in my hand right here. I think he's ahead in card advantage. But I think, uh, let's see what I do here. Yeah, he's got three cards in his hand and two on the field, so that's five. And I only have three in hand and uh, three in hand. And do I have one on the field? No, I don't. So I just have three in hand, so he's up two on me. So I'm thinking right here, um, there's no point in attacking with a Sinister because there's no cards in his deck that have less than 300 defense. So I think I end up just, uh... oh, I had I had one back row. Okay, so he's just only one off of me. But I end up setting the Sinister and passing. He flips the Moth, so okay. Um, so he's thinking between you know, the Pot of Greed, the Heavy Storm, the MSD. Um, Decides to go for the embassy, which is interesting. I think he figures he's already up in card advantage and um, might as well just simplify the game state. I tried to use Ring of Destruction to destroy his moth, um, but he pro plays me pretty hard right here. Um, he pro plays me pretty hard right here. I think he's just looking at his graveyard to see how. Um, aggressively or passively he should play right now to see if um, if I have game next turn or he has a Kaiku in his hand and he's looking what to banish with Kaiku or seeing if Chaos Monsters are alive but uh, yeah so he has the book it's a pro play <laughs> so um, sets his moth it's pretty great yeah he does have the Kaiku um, so he's in a pretty good spot now he has a set moth again He's got like the best spells in the grave. He's got Greed and Heavy Storm, so he's in a really good spot. Um, all I could do is T-Set and pass. So he's gonna flip them off again and use Greed for the second time, probably. Yeah, so he gets back Greed and uses it again, so. Oh, no, 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 sorry. He gets back MST and uses it for the third time right here. <laughs> so he hits my scapegoat, which was pretty nice. Like, if he grabbed the greed, that would have been even worse for me. But he's just trying to uh, keep me at bay by uh, constantly clearing my back row. Okay, he summons Sork and uh, clears three of my cards right here. Yeah, so that, that scapegoat came in pretty clutch. Um, I'm holding on here. Not in a good spot, but I'm holding on. Okay. And this is why I like Sinister. You just keep getting it back. Um, <laughs> I crashed into his moth with the Sinister. It's the best I could do right here instead of back row. Uh, at this point, it's not looking super great for me. Uh, he's got the Kaiku. So he could potentially banish my Sinister if he can clear the scapegoat tokens. Um, but he ends up playing a little bit uh, conservatively here. Okay, sorry. He flips another Moth. Holy. Okay, so he's resolved Moth like four times. <laughs> he's used Greed like twice and... Um, yeah. <laughs> and MST like three times. So... Yeah, that's the problem. This deck can't really use uh, Nobleman super effectively um, because it makes their it makes Dim Dimension Fusion live for them. Uh, and since he's playing multiple Tekoichis and uh, Gravekeeper Spy, uh, Nobleman just ends up thinning his deck out for him. I didn't end up siding it. Maybe I should have, but it's really hard um, playing against him because he sides in, like I said, the Jogans and the Kaikus, and he's very selective about when he sets cards. So he usually plays a little bit aggro and then just summons the Kaikus and the Jogans and then the Noble Man is just basically sit dead in my hand for a while and he just, you know, uh, goes in with them. So it's always really tricky whether or not I should side in the Noble Mans against him, especially going first because obviously you can't use Noble Man going first. Um, it's better going second. So it's tricky. I think I did not side them in. So he's getting so much value off of his Magician of Faith. But um, I do have the Chaos Orc, and you saw I did clear the uh, Kaiku with the break so I could summon that Sork.
But um, yeah, I'm not in the worst spot right here. Uh, definitely in a spot to come back, possibly. But uh, you can also see that my graveyard is bigger than my deck at this point in time. So um, I don't have too many more opportunities to make a big push um, just because the um, deck is running pretty low. Okay, so what does he do here? I believe he summons tribe. Yep, so he summons tribe, pitches uh, Thunder Dragon, calls Spellcaster, blowing up his own moth and my um, Sork. Uh, and he tries to get in there for 2600. Um, I think I'm sitting on a scapegoat, so I don't want to activate it because he can just clear them in main phase two with the tribe. So I think I just end up taking that 2600 to the face. Yeah, I do. So yeah, it's kind of tricky um, when your opponent has tribe infecting and you're sitting on a scapegoat, uh, choosing when to activate that scapegoat and when to just take the damage. But let's see what I have right here. I just have to set the sin I just have to set the sinister serpent. But at this point, the sinister serpent I've summoned it like like five times, so it's it's put in work. But um, I'm not in the best spot right here. Uh, he makes kind of a pro play move right here. He uh, pitches another Thunder Dragon, calling uh, or calling Fiend. So he pops his own Sangin and searches for Jaugen, um, which is a pretty pretty nice play. Um, let's see what he does. He Jarb Grease to dig deeper. And... I think he just runs over the Sinister Serpent with the uh, Tribe Infecting. Yeah, he does that. This is an interesting play right here, or he decides not to summon the Jaugen in main phase two. I'm not really sure why. I think he he is, I'm not really sure why, but he might be, um, he might think that the back row is a Torrential that I've been holding on to for a good time. So he's in a, he, he's, He's in a winning position right now, so I think he's just holding the Jaugen. If I make a big play, he can always just normal summon the Jaugen and um, pop my whole field. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why he didn't summon the Jaugen. But I top deck a Swords, which is a nice top deck. Um, so he summons the Jaugen right there. Um, I do have a set card now, so if I had the Torrential, then that set card is kind of like a little bit of collateral. Um, but right now I'm just sitting on Swords, trying to bite out my time. Sinister Serpent putting in absolute work here because it's 300 and Jaugen has 200 attacks, so you can run over Jaugen with Sinister. Another good reason to play Sinister. Um, and he's going to be forced to make like a super suboptimal play right here um, if he wants to keep the Jaugen alive, that is. He's either going to have to minus himself with Break um, or like waste uh, Mirror Force here or something. But um, let's see. Okay, so he's Ring of Destruction on, on Sinister, which uh, I'm really not upset about. Um, it's kind of a funny play, but it's probably the right thing to do. But uh, it's pretty sick. I baited out a Ring of Destruction with my Sinister, so. And I'm still sitting on Swords of Revealing Light. I think I have um, two turns left here. Okay, so he turns the Jag into the defense mode, um, sets them a back row. He's got a really good field right now. I can't special summon still. Uh, I don't really. I can't use my scapegoat because it's because uh, of Jaugen. Um So I'm trying to make a push here. I use the True Nade. I kind of assume he has the Solemn Judgment because he's sitting on three back row. If he doesn't, then I'm going to make the push, and then I'm also going to reset my Swords of Revealing Light, which would be a nice bonus, but he almost definitely has a Solemn Judgment. Um, and uh, let's see what he does here. He's looking at my grave, I think, to see what's there and what I can do, um, seeing how big of a push I can make right now. But keep in mind that my Dimension Fusion uh, actually benefits him quite a bit. He has three uh, banished monsters right now, and the Chaos Sorcerer that's banished was actually summoned properly, so it would come back as well, which sucks for me. 
because I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. But um, he does use the judgment on the true nade, which is probably the right play. But I have the follow up lightning vortex play, which is pretty sweet. He doesn't have another judgment right there. So I clear his board. I basically just tried to bait out the judgment with the true nade. And now I'm thinking about how to push. Again, I have to make a push pretty quickly because you can see my deck. There's like less than 10 cards in there. Um, so I don't have too much time and I just use my Lightning Vortex and True Nade right now. So I'm not going to have another opportunity to make a push again. But like I said, it's tricky because he has three Banished, which will come back with uh, Defusion. Um, I pretty much have every relevant spell in my graveyard at this point in time. I have Lightning Vortex, Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity. Monster Reincarnation, uh, Snatch Steel, and I'm thinking about how to go about this once his three monsters come back and what the best way to clear his field is going to be. It's it's really tricky. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you guys know a better way to play out of this situation that I didn't think of, uh, let me know. But I think I make the best play that I could. Um, given the circumstances. Okay, so I'm activating Dimension Fusion and the Jinzo is going to come back, which will shut off all his traps. So he's chaining the Raigeki Break while he still can. And he makes a good read right here. He asks to see my scapegoat. Um, he's making a read that my back row is a scapegoat. And he's just rereading it to make sure that I can't uh, summon on the turn that I activate scapegoat. Um, so now he's choosing between the Swords of Revealing Light and the back row to pop with the Raigeki Break. And um, he makes a good choice and he chooses the, the back row, which did end up having to be, which uh, did happen to be the scapegoat. So he makes a good call there. Um, I bring back the Jinzo and the Crane. He's thinking right now about whether or not to put the Breaker and Thunder Dragon in attack mode. Um, and he ends up making the right call because they're both 1600 attack. So I would have to uh, crash into them with the Crane to get rid of them. Um, so he, he ends up making the right choice here and puts them in attack mode because they're, um, yeah, they're both 1600. And right now, uh, like I said, I have, you know, Graceful, Pot of Greed in my, in my graveyard, but there really aren't too many cards left in the deck. So I don't think digging deeper will help. I'm sitting on a Demok in my hand and Raigeki Break in my hand. Uh, so right now I'm really choosing between Lightning Vortex and Snatch Steel. If I take the Vortex, um, okay, so I have the Demok in my hand, but I don't want to normal summon it first. I want to attack one monster first, because if he has Judgment and he stops the Demok summon, then I just lose. But main phase two, I'm going to tribute for Demok and choose between Vortex and Snatch Steel. If I take the Vortex, then I clear his field, but I get rid of the only card in my hand which is a Raigeki Break, and I'm kind of assuming that he maybe has a Raigeki Break in his back row, um, which he can use to clear my Demok, and then at that point I'm basically just top decking sucks. Um, so he'll have no field, um, but I will be left top decking, and I think he has one card in his hand. Does he? Can't really see, but... I end up taking the Snatch Steel, and my thought process here is that I could take it, banish his uh, Thunder Dragon. He's forced to use his uh, Raigeki Break if he has it on the Snatch Steel, and yes, he's going to banish my um, Demok, but I'll still have the Raigeki Break. So it's effectively the same outcome as if I had taken Lightning Vortex, because I will not have Demok. Uh, he'll have his uh, Chaos Sorcerer, but I have the flexibility um, to choose a Destroyer or something else with the Raigeki Break. So I think this is um, the best I could do here. But yeah, he has the Raigeki Break. Uh, he pitched the Sinister during standby phase, so he uh, gets it back. And he banishes my uh, Demok with his Chaos Sorcerer. Um, yeah, maybe I should take Lightning Vortex because then we would both be um, top decking. But I don't know. I thought it was a pretty solid play. Let me know if you guys disagree.
But uh, at this point in time, uh, it's kind of hard for me to come back. Like I said, there's not too much left in the deck anyway, so I can't really make another push. I think all the Dimension Fusions are in the grave at this point in time, so uh, won't we'll even be able to get those. He top deck a Dokoichi, which is just a nice top deck, a nice late game top deck like this. And he draws into Graceful. Okay, so he drew into Graceful off the Dokoichi. That's a sick draw, and um, now I'm just in a pretty bad spot here. <laughs> Okay, so, yep, I'm in a pretty bad spot. I think he's uh, thinking about whether or not he should summon a card, checking my graveyard to see if there's Torrential in there. I don't think the Torrential's in there, so he's playing around Torrential. Um, but yeah, he's he's seeing if he should summon another card and tackle all three, or just going with those two. Um, okay, no, he was seeing if he should, he could afford to use another upstart, which he definitely can. I'm checking to see how many cards he has in his deck, just seeing if I can like deck him out before I deck out, which is, I'm not going to last so long, but I was just curious. Um, and I think he just ends up attacking with the Dokoichi and the Sork, and I'm forced to uh, break the Sork. So, yeah, but he has, uh, he's up a couple cards because he drew off the Dokoichi and the Graceful. And uh, not looking good for me right now, but I do try to make one more push right here. I think I top decked, top decked a monster gate, which is exactly why sinister is so good because it um, the monster gate would be dead if I didn't have a sinister. I get the fusilier. I try to attack the kaiku, and right now I'm in a spot where I could come back if I get lucky, but no, nah, I'm not lucky. <laughs> He's got the BLS, so um, yeah, that's game. Uh, yeah, I thought those were some pretty interesting games. Let me know what you guys think. If you could have thought of, a, if you thought I should make a different play in the end there, when I was choosing what to get back with Demok, or if I should like summon Demok first, or whatever you guys think, let me know. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.